Okay, so Suron just announced a brand new high-end version of their very popular electric bikes. It's a little bit different than you might expect, but honestly, I think it's a very compelling and unique package on the market. So I'm gonna play the official trailer and then we're gonna break it down and discuss it in depth. Okay, so let's begin with the specs so you guys know what you're looking at. This is the all new 2023 Suron Ultra B. And in terms of the lineup, this is in addition to the Storm BF and the Light B that we're all familiar with. And yes, later on in the video, I will be doing a direct comparison of all these models. But to get the specs out of the way, this has a 74 volt, 55 amp hour battery on the inside and the whole thing only weighs 187 pounds for being a full-on motorcycle or a light electric motorcycle that's not bad at all the onyx is 150 pounds and i think the ktm exc electric motorcycle is well north of 200 pounds the motor comes in at a peak power of 12 and a half kilowatts the range is 87 miles going a modest 25 miles per hour the top speed is listed at 56 miles per hour you can get up to a speed of 31 miles per hour in just 2.3 seconds. You have a couple of riding modes, traction control, regen braking, and you can charge the whole thing in four hours. But this part is a little bit confusing to me. Now keep in mind, this website is just one of the distributors of this bike, but it says here that there's only going to be an off-road model being sold in the US and Canada. But if we take a closer look at this bike, it appears to have everything it needs to be registered and street legal, namely lights in the front and back along with turn signals. But putting that small caveat aside, the rest of the bike does look super fresh. It's essentially a bigger version of the Suron Light B with the battery placement, motor, controller, even just the overall geometry of the bike is extremely similar. And just like with the Light B, you can still access the battery, although you do it in a slightly different way. It looks like you lift up the entire seat and that's how you can gain access to the battery. It still uses this primary belt drive, which is actually a huge advantage, not just for the better gear ratio, but it allows the chain in the back to originate from the pivot point of the rear swing arm. And in this top-down view, we can see that there is a second set of pegs for a passenger, kind of cool. And on the right-hand side, we can see the display. It's small, minimal, but I mean, it looks to get the job done. And I mean, the rest of the bike is just super clean. The rear suspension, it still has its same linkage in the back, and that's good. It gives you leverage and thus better rear suspension. Okay, now I know half of you guys watching already left a comment saying that because you need insurance, a license plate, it's not worth it. And instead, you're going to pick up a light B. And that's fine, you know, you can do anything you want with your money. But the Ultra does provide value by fixing a shortcoming of the Light B. So currently, when people buy the Light B, it's a fantastic product, but tons of people end up spending way more money on this bike, upgrading the battery, the controller, and even the motor sometimes. We can see here that the KO motor and controller system is around $2,400. And if you just want the controller, it's around a thousand dollars and then along with that you also have to buy a better 72 volt battery and this is going to cost you around twenty five hundred dollars as well so adding that to the price tag of the light b you could easily spend close to ten thousand dollars upgrading the power on this bike and tons of people do that but now with the ultra you can just buy this model if you know that you want to upgrade the power to a higher voltage system and because this has all the necessary stuff to potentially make it street legal that allows you to actually ride it on the road and get more out of it 
The only remaining question in terms of this value debate is how much is this new Ultra gonna cost? Because as of now, we do not have a price tag, but it should be pretty easy to guess the price range of this bike using the other models as a comparable. So obviously it's gonna cost more than the Light BX at $4,500. The motor here is about twice the power and the battery significantly more beefy. But the rest of the bike, the frame, the suspension, is pretty similar. Now the Storm BX has these specifications. A much more powerful 22 and half kilowatt peak power motor, which is liquid cooled. And the battery is actually bigger, so it's still 55 amp hours, but it's 104 volts. And this model only cost $8,500. So based off of those specifications, the Ultra should be priced somewhere in between these two models. And if that is indeed the case, then the price to spec ratio would be absolutely insane and unmatched across the entire market. Now, it's not everyone's cup of tea because you have to get registered, a license plate, and we still need all the details on whether or not you can even register this along with the actual price tag. But to me, it is so promising and unique. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Leave a like, subscribe if you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.